I never talk to a fish. <laughs> Good morning, friends. My name is Brandon Dayton. I am your humble narrator. Welcome back to Project Zomboid. I heard some glass break during the night. So, uh... If I were smart, I'd just run out the back door, but... I'm a little more curious than I am smart, so I want to find out where the glass was. It wasn't in the front. Maybe it was not in this building at all. It's a little bit hard to tell. Mmm, mmm. I'm tempted to bring some, uh, some whiskey with me, but we've already got enough shit on our, uh, on our backs, and I gotta make my way back home. It's been a nice few days hanging out down here at the mall, but you know, you can't do it forever. That's just how it goes. Oh my god. Hetchler and Cock. Yes. I got enough room to take this. Come on. Give me this shit. <laughs> if anything, I need this. Number one. Hopefully that's not gonna load me up too bad. Yeah. Very heavy load. Well, sometimes that's how it goes. Round here. You know what I'm saying? We got a long road ahead of us. But I'm willing to do it. Because I don't want to live near the mall. These zombies just keep respawning infinitely, and it's extremely frustrating. It's impossible to clean them all out. So you know what? I'm going back to my house where I know I can keep the streets safe for me and my family. Well, or just me. My family used to be here, but now they're zombies! Oh no! Backstory! I wonder what is the backstory of little Dayton. I think, uh, I think he was visiting Kentucky on a, a convention or something like that. It was like a VidCon, but, you know, it wasn't like that lefty wing VidCon. It was the good one. <laughs> the one that takes place in Kentucky for all the conservatives and good Americans. <laughs> ah, I just said leftists aren't good Americans. <laughs> it's true. Oh my god. <laughs> Before I get myself into some trouble, Let's, uh, let's read some creepy pastas. I think that's always a nice thing to do when we're on the road. And I hope that you guys enjoyed that as well. So here goes. This is a pasta by Nene Lee called Maternal Instinct. I looked down at my children as they slept, the moonlight hitting their faces softly. They all looked so peaceful. They were my children, and I would do anything to protect them. That night I made a vow that I would never harm them, no matter what the circumstance. I was a good mother, and a good mother never harms her children. The days begin to get more harried and more stressful, and my kids could see the dark circles that begin to form under my eyes and the wrinkles that creased my forehead. Work was getting harder and harder, and it had been difficult to work as a nurse on the late night shift to begin with. My children remained blissfully unaware of the fact that we currently had a deadly pandemic sweeping the globe. I never thought that the zombie apocalypse would actually happen. I was a rational and, sens rational and sensible person, and the supernatural had never been a great concern of mine. However, when the hospitals become flooded with corpses that have gone cold, and they suddenly start screaming again as they're wheeled to the morgue, what has occurred is just a little bit difficult to ignore. The hardest part was seeing the children that were occasionally wheeled in, wailing in despair while trying to rip out the throat of the orderlies. As the doctors experimented and tried to find a cure, I sat with my fellow nurses as we plugged our ears and tried to block out the screaming. Only small patches of the world had been affected so far, so no extreme emergency measures had yet been taken. All we wanted was to return home and make sure our families were safe, but going home would lead to nothing but nightmares of grey decaying skin and white pupilless eyes. I tried desperately to keep up a semblance of normalcy around my children. I would come home, smile, tell them mommy had another rough night at work. Yet I was terrified to sleep during the day, terrified that when I opened my eyes, my own children would be staring at me with their jaws slack and white, unblinking eyes. When it came to work, the only thing that kept me awake anymore was the screaming. My stomach always turned over when I saw the children being wheeled to the incinerator. Surely a mother could never harm her children like that, even if she lost all reason. Surely maternal instinct was stronger than whatever this disease that was that had gripped our world like a vice. In this Morning's lights, early rays, I got off the bus that sent me to, to and from work and collapsed onto my bed. It had been a long, hard night helping at the research lab. My husband fixed the covers over me and tucked me in securely. I, grin I grunted in thanks. 
In the other room, I could hear my children beginning to wake, and I wondered how long I could fool them into thinking that everyone was simply on a long holiday. It had been obvious from the start that our little local hospital was doomed to fail. The bus no longer came for me. I simply stayed home and cared for my children, and admittedly I finally managed to sleep more comfortably when I could control my resting times. I couldn't seem to shake my night owl habits, though. Every night I would kiss my three-year-old goodnight, smooth back the hair from my nine-year-old's forehead, and gently squeeze my ten-year-old's hand. Then I would softly close the door and go about doing some busy work, never taking my eyes off that door. I would ensure that my children would sleep safe through the night. Soon the dead began shuffling to the door and pressing themselves against our windows. My children lo learned the truth the day my husband took out his rifle and shot two pallid gray, gray faces that managed to stick their hands underneath the front door. Something else was disturbing me. My right hand began to hurt something awful, and I started getting constant headaches. At the back of my mind, a thread of doubt snaked out and whispered something truly chilling to me while I lay in bed trying to sleep. Maybe you were wrong. I offered to take part in an experiment which, if proven successful, could make me immune to the pathogen communicated by the undead. I was not entirely familiar with the plan the doctors had described, but I realized that if this succeeded, I might be able to protect my family. If it failed, well, my incinerated ashes couldn't do much to harm my family either. Obviously, in addition to injecting me with the serum, the doctors had to see if it would actually work. I allowed myself to be bitten on my right hand, and when nothing happened, the feeling of relief overwhelmed me. The doctors were beside themselves with euphoria of triumph. It was too bad that the very next day, one of the young doctor's assistants got himself infected and destroyed the entire lab. I was the only person on the planet who could be bitten by this new adversary and survive. Are you sure? The next morning I awoke. How strange. Instead of tucking my children into bed, I opted for the first good night's sleep in a while. I rolled over to look at my husband and gently tapped him on the shoulder. He turned on his side to look at me. White, pupilless eyes met brown hazel ones that swiftly widened in fear as I realized what had transpired. My husband didn't even have time to scream before I bit his neck and sank my teeth into his throat. Feeling the warm gush of blood in my mouth, I feasted upon his innards, driven by an indescribable hunger and an instinct akin to that of a tiger or a lion. Once my primal hunger was satisfied, I left his still warm body on our bedroom floor and drunkenly shuffled to the room of my children. I looked upon all three of them as they stirred in their sleep. Strange. I felt no desire to break their bones or feast on their flesh. Perhaps no matter how be primitive I became, I would not forget my children. Perhaps this restraint was maternal instinct. After all, a good never mother never harms her children. I couldn't say the same for their father, though, who had begun to stir from where I left him only minutes ago. <laughs> Paternal instinct is not so strong, huh? And there we are. I hope that you enjoyed it, friends. So I'm going to take a, a little bit of a breaky break because I have excessive exertion and if I got caught by a zombie, then I don't really want to uh, have to hit him a thousand times to bring him down. So we're going to stop off our little pit stop at the drag strip and hopefully I can find some food or something. I do have those MREs, but they are so well preserved that I would like to save them for a little bit later. I probably ate all the good stuff out of here. Mm-hmm. Look at this. We can have some processed cheese. Oh, there's a, a cake donut. I left myself one. How thoughtful of me. So, uh, let's have a little rest. And hopefully that's gonna do just fine. 10.30 in the morning. We got a pretty good start heading out this way. So, uh, yeah, we're going to be able to uh, get the base back on track and things like that. Oh my god, feeling a little bit drowsy as well, but, you know, I don't have time for all that. Maybe we can have a little nap once we get back to the house, something like that. But right now, uh, we're on the road, and we're more than halfway uh, back, so that is quite nice. I did find a good amount of shit in there. Uh... Probably the box of nails is what I'm the most proud of. So many of those motherfuckers. But, um, yeah. Combination padlocks, house alarms, all this good stuff. I'm gonna have to figure out what to do with it, but, um, I'm glad to have it for surezies. I, I don't suppose, uh, rigging my own house up with a burglar alarm would be a good idea. 
I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the point would be. Maybe to uh, create an explosive or something like that, and then the zombies will be attracted to the explosive before it explodes. That would be pretty cool, huh? But I'm, I'm not sure. I haven't been able to make any explosives thus far. And now it's uh, a little rainy, which is really not good. I should have stayed at the drag strip, but I didn't want to. I could have just slept there. I could have had a wonderful afternoon, but instead I'm going to be soaked to the bone before I get back home. Um, but I think I do have some bath towels and stuff at the main base. The restaurant base, uh, it's hard to tell which one is the main base now, because we got the one that's way out near the trailer parks. We've got the uh, Knox Bank near the mall. We've got the fishing shack, and then we've got the restaurant. The restaurant, I guess I would still consider the main base. That's where most of my goods are, I do suppose. But uh, fishing shack, definitely my favorite. That's the one I built with my bare hands. My, my own two man hands. When I started this journey, my man hands were un... un... <laughs> what? Untouched. Uncalloused. But now, look at them. You can't see them, but look at them. They're so manly and rugged. I smashed them with a hammer so many times. And now my carpentry is going up through the roof. And my blood accuracy is still uh, piddling about. But still pretty good. Not not too bad. Um, three skill points available? My god. I kind of want to do light-footed and nimble. But, um, yeah. Even without them leveled, I seem to be doing pretty okay sneaking around zombies in the mall. At least when I want to. But most of the time, I'm like, just fucking brain them! Brain them all! What's that, six zombies? I'll take them. I'll take them all down. I don't give a fuck anymore. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> you want me to be real honest? I'm super proud of little Dayton. He's got some balls, man! Speed slightly reduced. Got that high exertion going. My god. Just can't catch a break. I don't understand. But, uh, yeah. At least I know my way back to the mall. Back and forth now. I think the more, uh, you run to the mall and back, the more you're gonna drag zombies towards your base. I guess that makes sense. Since you're running past the zombies and they try to follow you. And they just get a little closer to your base. And then, uh, you run past and run past again. And they're like, oh, oh hey. Soaking. God damn it. Got a chance of catching a cold now. I didn't think it was still raining. Yeah, it is, though. Uh, I just couldn't hear the rain sounds. So I'm like, oh, good. We're fine. Nope. I gotta go make myself a hot soup. Some chicken noodle. And a uh, towel off. That's part of the reason I decided to be bald, though. You know? Uh, you don't have all this rain caught in your hair. But then you also don't have the hair to uh, warm your head up. <laughs> and hair is surprisingly effective at that shit. Like, if, you, if you've if you never shaved your head, you will be amazed at how much, how much of a breeze there is. Before I joined the Navy, I never bothered to shave my head. And then I did it, and I was just like, whoa, this is fucking amazing. And, uh... Yeah, I did it for years after that. Now I don't do it anymore because my wife don't like that shit. And honestly, I do think I look better with a, a bit of hair on the top. But that shit's going. So when, I, when I'm when i bald, when I'm a chrome dome, I'm just going to fucking embrace it and be like, guess what, I'm bald again. You guys will still love me, right? I sure hope so. Oh my god, drenched. We made a big mistake. We made a big mistake. I'm super drenched. And I might catch my death. Oh god. Fuck. I didn't think it would be so bad. How did it get so bad? Well, we're relatively close to home, but, um, yeah. My exertion and my wetness. <laughs> I'm all exerted and wet. Ooh. Don't you guys like that? Does that make you hot? Makes me pretty hot. I go sleep on the roof over there. But no, I'm so close to my house. It's gonna be fine. I just need to climb up our little rope ladder. Actually, first thing I need to do is uh, get in the bathroom 
and towel myself off, so hopefully I won't catch a cold. But it says high chance of catching a cold, so I might be fucked as far as that goes. I don't have a, a spare change of clothes or anything like that, so I don't know. It could be bad. Oh, uh, hello. Hello, base. Lovely to see you again. Yes, indeedy. And I know it's so safe in here. Dry self. Uh, dry yourself again. <laughs> Wet bath towel. Can I just, like, empty it? Oh, dry yourself. Come on. There you go. Now we're just wet. Should I use the last one? I think so. Less chance of catching a cold, the better. How do I get rid of the wetness, though? Do I just have to leave it in my inventory? Oh, yeah. Look at that. It's getting slightly less wet as I hold it. So I guess I'm going to just hold these for a little while. <laughs> just hold these wet bath towels. Everything's normal here. Jesus Christ. Oh, here's where I keep all my guns and whatnot. So I'm going to go ahead and toss these on the floor. Just until my marksmanship goes up a little bit more. I got some fresh pork chops. I'm going to eat that. Mmm. Yes. Delicious. And now I'm all nice and dry. I didn't even have to change my clothes. That's rather nice. Hmm. No room on this shelf. No room on the other. That's fine. I got plenty of room over here somewheres. Right? Sure. Sure I do. I guess cupcakes are fine. Just leave them wherever. Because uh, they were just sitting on a shelf and... I guess there's enough preservatives and whatnot. Mmm. And then empty these bags. I kind of want to keep my axe just so I don't lose it. Box of MREs can go. Broccoli seeds can go. Home alarm. I need to figure out what to do with this fucking thing. I know it's going to be useful for something at some point. But uh, I don't know when. I don't know where. I don't know why. Let's put some pop twine, wire, wood glue, all this can go. I don't need any of this at the moment. I'll fill this shelf up with my goods from the mall. Hell yeah. Um, did I put my combination lock away? I kind of want to figure out what to do with that as well. No, combination padlock is still here. Uh, box of nails, I guess I'll bring with me for now. Combination padlock, you can stay. Fishing net traps, yeah, I gotta place all this shit. But, uh, I think a nap is in order. At least a little rest. My exertion is so high. Oh, poor little Dayton. Oh my god, look at all these rotten fish. Okay. I guess I'll take these with me. Can I use rotten fish as bait? I guess that would make good sense, right? Fish don't give a fuck. They're like, oh, fish is fish. Maybe. I don't know. I never talked to a fish. Instead, I got my uh, compost pile going out here, which I think is pretty nice. It says I'm exhausted, in danger of passing out, so I don't think it's a good idea to just go run the streets while I'm uh, about to fall on my fucking face. That's fine. We got some stuff to do here. I've got so many uh, boxes of nails. That is absolutely amazing. I'm going to take this Glock. Move this a little bit. Smith and Wesson, you can come with me. Um, I still don't think I'm going to be able to fit all those fucking nails. That is a lot of nails that I have. 39, so yeah. 12 pounds of nails, something like that. Hmm, I just don't know where to put it at the moment. I do know that I need to uh, equip this baseball bat before my aluminum one goes to shit. Do the aluminum ones, uh, not work as well? Is that what I am to understand? I don't really know. I don't really know for sure. Oh, look in here. We got some room for nails in here. We'll put the Glock, we'll put the Smith and Wesson. Oh my god, not all this. And my bath towels are dry now, so, uh, wonderful. Use to dry self when wet. Always know where your towel is. Don't forget to bring a towel. Hmm. Boxes of nails. Offload all this crap. 
I don't need all this with me. And it starts with a B, so it's right at the top of the, the shelf or whatever. Some rotten cheese. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll move this. <laughs> I don't know how the cheese got in there. We've got eight cupcakes. Mmm. Marinara sauce. Yes. Wonderful. Hmm. I'm curious about the combination padlock. I'm also curious why the, uh, the power hasn't gone off yet. I said I'd edit the, the files in the last episode, but I googled around and couldn't find it, so I guess I'm gonna have to google around just a little bit more to figure out what the fuck to do, or if I just have to wait forever. If it doesn't ever happen, then that is a sad thing. When I was playing with Plantosh, that shit went off, like, almost immediately. So, I'm a little, a little saddened. Look at all this. Banana, barbecue rat, cabbage. That's gonna turn into compost in no time. Or a disgusting maggot-filled sludge. <laughs> I'm not sure which. Oh, God. It's uh, a little bit early, 5 o'clock, but I've been up so long. And I ran so much today, and I'm just so tired. I'm going to take a little nappy nap, and uh, I hope you guys will forgive me for that. But I wanted to say thank you so much for watching, friends. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. Please don't forget to like, comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy the episode. I always enjoy that, uh, and it helps the, the channel to get out there. More people can find our Project Zomboid videos and join in on the adventure. And it's turning into a massive fucking adventure. I, I thought, honestly, that this would last probably like 20 or 30 episodes, and now we've done uh, three times that amount. So I'm super impressed with myself. I hope that you guys are uh, having a good time still and able to learn some stuff from my, my misadventures, <laughs> I guess I would call them. Um, but yeah, I'm always trying to push the limit exhibit all the the new stuff that is added in patches and stuff like that still waiting for npcs still waiting for cars i think i've been talking about that for like since forever but um yeah eventually we probably will see it and i'll be super grateful that i have all these gas cans um and then r probably right when the cars come the power is going to get shut off and i can't get any more fuel out of the pumps but <laughs> we'll see how it goes when we get there and hopefully we will get there because, uh, yeah, I almost died in the last episode. This bitch jumped out and grabbed me inside the mall and I was like, hey, help, police, molestation. <laughs> Anyways, I'll see you in the next one, friends. Thank you so much for watching. And until then, bye-bye. One, two, three, four. Goodbye, 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 see you again. Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my 